The spirit of perversion is the controlling spirit behind many sexual immorality of any type, such as fornication, lust, adultery, pornography, prostitution, and any sexual practices forbidden by the Word of God. Sexuality is a gift from God. God created sex and all the desire that comes with it. Therefore, God does not condemn you for having natural desires for sexual intimacy. Just like all other great gifts from God, the devil uses it to create strongholds that can torment us and have us move farther away from God. In today's world, many take sex as a casual activity without understanding of the consequences. There are apps and websites for those who do not want to date but looking for a hookup for casual sex. What most of these people don't realize, sexual sins are sins not only against God, but also against their own bodies. 1 Corinthians 6 verse 18 says, Flee from sexual immorality. All other sins a person commits are outside the body, but whoever sins sexually sins against their own body. Sexual sins are not limited to one type of sex. Sexual sin is having sex with someone you are not married to in the eyes of God. This includes heterosexual sex, homosexual sex, bestiality, pedophilia, masturbation, and watching pornography. In God's eyes, these sexual sins are all the same. The physical consequences can differ, but sexual sin is sexual sin. God created sex and gave us guidelines for our urges to keep us safe and healthy. The way He tells us to practice sex is in a marriage with only one spouse in a respectful way. However, if a wife or husband denies their spouse sexual advances, it opens the door for an attack from the enemy. 1 Corinthians 7 verse 5 Do not deprive one another except with consent for a time, that you may be forgiving, that you may give yourself to fasting and prayer and come together again, so that Satan does not tempt you because of your lack of self-control. Overcoming sexual sins are a challenge. With the easy access to the internet and porn in your pocket wherever you go, those who are suffering from sexual sins are having a difficult time trying to get rid of these bad habits. Christians are certainly not immune to temptations, to lust and sexual sins. The consequences of failure in this area will be devastating, and a believer who sins sexually brings shame to the name of the Lord. A child of God must seek to reflect his Lord's true character. 1 Peter 1 verse 14 to 19 tells us, So you must live as God-obedient children. Do not slip back into your old ways of living to satisfy your own desires. You did not know any better then, but now you must be holy in everything you do, just as God who chose you is holy. For the scripture says, you must be holy because I am holy. And remember the heavenly Father to whom you pray has no favorites. He will judge or reward you according to what you do. So you must live in reverent fear of Him during your time here as a temporary residence. For you know that God paid a ransom to save you from the empty life you inherited from your ancestors. And it was not paid with mere gold or silver, which loses their value. It was the precious blood of Christ, the sinless, spotless Lamb of God. But how do you overcome sexual sins and immorality? First realize your body was made for God and not sexual immorality. 1 Corinthians 6 verse 13 tells us, Food was made for the stomach, and the stomach for food. This is true, though someday God will do away with both of them. But you cannot say that our bodies were made for sexual immorality. They were made for the Lord, and the Lord cares about our bodies. You need to request help from God. Philippians 4 verse 6 says, Do not worry about anything. Instead, pray about everything. Tell God what you need, and thank Him for all He has done. You also need to get rid of anything that causes you to sin. Romans 13 verse 14 Instead, close yourself with the presence of the Lord Jesus Christ and do not let yourself think about ways to indulge your evil desires. Anything from TV programs to private internet access and magazines. Remove yourself from situations that lead to opportunities to commit sexual sin. 1 Corinthians 6 verse 18 Run from sexual sin. No other sin so clearly affect the body as this one does. For sexual immorality is a sin against your own body. Keep your thoughts on good things. When your thoughts become a problem, and they probably will, always replace an impure thought with a good thought and understand that success is possible with God's help. Philippians 4 verse 8 tells us, And now, dear brothers and sisters, one final thing, fix your thoughts on what is true and honorable and right and pure and lovely and admirable. Think about things that are excellent and worthy of praise.
Repent from past actions and behaviors. Remember, repentance is a change of mind that leads to a change in behavior. There is a difference between being sorry you got caught and sorry you have sinned against God. Really fear God because He is God and means business. He is gracious and merciful to the repentant but will punish those who aren't. Even believers will be punished. Receive God's protection and faith, knowing that Satan will be putting temptation in your way to make you fail. Ephesians 6 verse 16 tells us, In addition to all these, hold up the shield of faith to stop the fiery arrows of the devil. And with his help, you can overcome. 1 John 5 verse 4 to 5 For every child of God defeat this evil world, and we achieve this victory through our faith. And who can win this battle against the world? Only those who believe that Jesus is the Son of God. 1 John 1 verse 9 If we confess our sin, He is faithful and righteous to forgive us of our sin and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. 1 Thessalonians 4, verse 3 to 5 and 7 to 8. For this is the will of God, your sanctification. That is, if you abstain from sexual immorality, each of you know how to possess his own vessel in sanctification and honor, not in a lustful passion like the Gentiles who do not know God. For God has not called us for the purpose of impurity, but in sanctification. So he who rejects this is not rejecting man, but God who gives his Holy Spirit to you. Tonight we are going to pray so the Lord empower us to have increased victory over sexual sins for His glory and for our good. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, I ask your Holy Spirit to help me now to remember and to confess and renounce my sexual sins. Lord Jesus, I ask for your forgiveness for every act of sexual sin. You promise that if we confess our sins, you are faithful and just to forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. I ask you to cleanse me of all my sexual sins now, cleanse my body, my soul, and my spirit, cleanse my heart and mind and will, cleanse my sexuality. Thank you for forgiving me and cleansing me, Lord. I receive your forgiveness and cleansing. I renounce every claim I have ever given Satan to my life or sexuality through my sexual sins. Those claims are now broken by the cross and the blood of Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus, I thank you for offering me total and complete forgiveness. I receive that forgiveness now. I choose to forgive myself for all my sexual wrongdoing. I also choose to forgive those who may have harmed me sexually. I release them to you, Jesus. I release all my anger and judgment towards them. The cross is enough. Come, Lord Jesus, into my pain that caused me and heal me with your love. I now bring the cross of my Lord Jesus Christ between me and every person with whom I have been sexually intimate. I break all sexual, emotional, and spiritual bonds with anyone I had sexual encounter in my past. I keep the cross of Jesus Christ between us. Lord Jesus, I ask you to reveal to me every agreement I have made about my sexuality knowingly or unknowingly. I break this agreement in the name of my Lord Jesus Christ, and I renounce every claim I have given it in my life. I renounce any sexual thoughts. I bring the cross and the blood of Jesus Christ against this shame. I banish my enemy from my sexuality in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I invite the healing presence of Jesus to cleanse me and to restore me as a sexual being in fullness of joy and wholeness. I ask you, Jesus, to fill my sexuality with your holiness, to strengthen me and restore me in your name. Lord Jesus, I now consecrate my sexuality to you in every way. I consecrate my sexual intimacy with my spouse to you. I ask you to cleanse and heal my sexuality and our marital sexuality and our marital sexual intimacy in every way. I ask your healing grace to come and free me from all consequences of sexual sins. I ask you to fill my sexuality with your healing love and goodness. Restore my sexuality and wholeness. Let my spouse and me experience all the intimacy and pleasure you intended a man and woman to enjoy in marriage. I invite the Spirit of God to fill my marriage bed now. I continue to consecrate my sexuality to Jesus Christ. Father, I declare now that I come out of agreement with the spirit of perversion and the spirit of lust. I want you out of my soul and body in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. You must bow to his name now. I command you to live and not to come back ever in the name of Jesus. Father, I thank you that I am free from all bondage. I am free to live for you. Thank you for saving me, delivering me, and empowering me to live victoriously over all the power of the enemy. I pray all this in the mighty name of my Lord Jesus Christ. Amen.